Hello everyone, I'm Yash Prambhat, a wireless application engineer. Today, we'll explore how to implement over-the-air updates on the STM32WB55 chipset. This dual-core wireless MCU with built-in low-energy support is ideal for seamless and efficient firmware updates. Over the next few minutes, we'll walk through the key steps and best practices to ensure a smooth OTA update process, helping you keep your devices up to date without the need for physical intervention. OTA updates are a game-changing feature for BLE devices, offering several critical advantages. First and foremost, they allow manufacturers to remotely update the firmware of devices without needing physical access. Imagine having BLE-enabled sensors deployed in hard-to-reach locations like on a factory floor or embedded within industrial equipment. With OTA, you can push out updates to all those devices from a central location, saving time and effort. Security is another major reason why OTA is so important. As we know, the tech landscape is constantly evolving and new security vulnerabilities can emerge. OTA updates allow manufacturers to quickly patch these vulnerabilities, ensuring that devices remain secure and reliable over time. This is crucial in protecting user data and maintaining the integrity of the devices. But OTA isn't just about fixing issues. It's also about enhancing the user experience. With OTA updates, you can introduce new features and improvements long after the device has been deployed. This capability extends the lifespan of devices and ensures that they continue to meet users' evolving needs without the need for new hardware. From a business perspective, OTA updates offer significant cost efficiency. There's no need to recall devices or send technicians out for manual updates. Everything can be managed remotely, which not only saves money, but also reduces downtime for the user. Now let's dive into how OTA updates are implemented on the STM32WB55. To get started, you'll need two STM32WB55 boards. One board will act as the device receiving the update and the other can be used as the BLE host for testing purposes. Next, you'll need the STM32WB55 stack version 1.20, which you can download from the ST Microelectronics website st.com. This stack includes the necessary firmware and tools to facilitate the OTA update process. Make sure you have the latest version as it contains important updates and bug fixes that are crucial for a smooth OTA implementation. Once you have the hardware and software ready, you'll be able to begin the process of setting up your de development environment, configuring the OTA service and preparing your firmware for over-the-air updates. We'll go through these steps in detail to ensure you can successfully deploy OTA updates to your STM32WB55 based devices. To access the Zigbee example on the STM32WB55, you'll need to navigate to a specific file location which is shown here in the slide. In this folder, you'll find the OTA server coordinator and client router files which are essential for setting up your Zigbee OTA update project. Once you've located these files, the next step is to open them and begin your project setup. To do this, you'll need to launch the .c project file using the STM32CubeIDE. This integrated development environment is specifically designed for STM32 microcontrollers and will allow you to configure, build, and debug your Zigbee OTA update project. Starting with the OTA server coordinator file, you can set up the server that will manage the over-the-air updates. Then move on to the client router file to configure the client device that will receive the updates. These files contain the necessary configurations and code to establish communication between the devices and handle the OTA process effectively. By following these steps, you'll be well on your way to implementing Zigbee OT updates on the STM32WB55, ensuring that your devices remain up-to-date and fully functional. 
For this application, you'll need two STM32WB55 nuclear boards. Each board should be loaded with the wireless coprocessor binary as recommended in the readme documents provided with the application files. On the Zigbee OTA server coordinator board, a binary image must be loaded at the address 080300000 before starting the process. In this example, we'll be using the Zigbee on-off client router OTA application as the update. Once these prerequisites are met, you can proceed to start the coordinator and router boards. The board configured as the Zigbee router will automatically attach itself to the network created by the coordinator. This setup allows the router to be ready to receive OTA updates from the coordinator facilitating the firmware update process seamlessly. Let's walk through the flow of commands between the Zigbee OTA server acting as the coordinator and the Zigbee OTA client acting as the router during the OTA update process. The update process starts with the OTA client initiating a discovery of the OTA server by sending a Zigbee OTA client discover request, the server response, establishing the communication. Once the communication is established, the OTA server sends an image notify request to the client using the Zigbee OTA server image notify request command. This notifies the client that a new firmware image is available. The client then responds by sending a query next image request which prompts the server to start the firmware transfer. The actual firmware transfer occurs in blocks. The server sends the initial block of data using the Zigbee OTA client image transfer start command and the client requests the subsequent blocks as needed. To optimize the process, the client uses a RAM cache to temporarily store the received data. Minimizing the number of flash memory reads, each time the RAM cache nears capacity, the client writes the cache data to flash memory, ensuring the update process continues smoothly. As the blocks are transferred, the client's green LED toggles to indicate that the update is in progress. Once all the blocks are transferred, the client verifies the entire image to ensure it has been received correctly. At the end of this verification, the green LED remains on, signaling the completion of the image transfer. After the image verified is complete, the client sends an upgrade and request to server, signaling that the update process is complete. The server acknowledges this and the client then prepares to reboot. The client's blue and gray LED turns off, indicating that the device is ready for the final steps. Upon reboot, the device behaves according to the type of firmware loaded. If the type of firmware is an application like Zigbee on-off client router OTA, which is in this case, and if the file a wireless coprocessor binary is also compatible with it, you'll see the results in the following demo. Press on switch 1 for the OTA for application update. The download can take several seconds. The transfer rate can be followed looking into the traces. There's one user note that when LED 1, LED 2 and LED 3 are toggling, it is indicating an error has occurred on the application.
when the transfer is completed, reboot the router and check that the new binary has been correctly downloaded. To play again with this use case and load a new, new image, perform a full cleanup of the flash of the OTA client device using the Cube Programmer and reload the Zigbee OTA client router associated with the STM32 Zigbee FFT FW binary. To monitor the progress of the OT update, please refer to the traces displayed on both the server and router terminals. These traces will show the sequence of requests and notification commands allowing you to verify that the firmware transfer is progressing as expected. Once the transfer is complete, you will see a trace indicating the end of transfer confirming that the update has successfully finished. Now let's move into the breakout sessions for any questions you have.